Hi everyone, welcome to the very first of my Brush Demon Masterclasses, part one. Um, last weekend you decided that you would like to see me paint the Primaris Chaplin from the Indomitus box set. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so as always, the tools you're going to need for this project are some super glue, some plastic glue, pin vise with a one millimeter drill bit, a sharp hobby knife, and some clippers. Okay, so this is the uh, sprue from the Indomitus box set that we're going to need. So it's this guy here, and his chest plate and pistol, backpack detail, his knee detail, shoulder pads there. And then that pretty cool looking uh, backpack. It's going to be fun painting that. Looking forward to that. So let's start uh, taking them off the sprue. Okay, so I've gone through and I've cleaned up all the parts, moved all the mold lines. There were a couple of areas that I've done a little bit of extra cutting here where the, uh, I think it's a limitation on the molding, is where the, this was all sort of just one big block, which didn't look right. So I've, I've just cut away the detail as if they're individual plates again, because this is all just but one big detail. And I've also cleaned up the bottom of the book as well there was something funny going on with the straps so that's just, um that was just a scalpel blade didn't take very long just i've just cut it you can see so that you can see the straps go straight across the book they were a funny angle to them so that's that one thing i wanted to do i wanted to do it on camera was to uh, drill out that barrel of the gun Carefully drill it a little bit. Little attention to detail like that, especially a competition level. If you're going to be entering a piece, make sure that you've drilled the barrels out. I like to drill out the sides as well to damage the detail. If you can't see what I'm doing there, it's, um, it's just the, the side vent. Because you've set, drilled out the centers already, just a couple of turns will take you all the way through. Don't want to go overboard or you don't want to damage the end of the gun, which is quite easy to do. Okay, so pretty much better. Okay, so there's that. All right, so I've been having a look at the um, sub assemblies, and I think we can, we can safely put these part two parts together. That would be one sub assembly like that. Um, Going to keep the shoulder pads separate as well. This will be glued position on his knee. Like that. Pretty simple. The only thing I've been sort of deliberating over is the these pieces. Now they've been really well designed. They fit together really well, really nicely. Um, a lot of the joins are all hidden in the detail. But the detail in here is quite tight and I like to make things nice and easy for myself and I'm sort of tempted because of the way it's modelled like that is that we could paint the head all in one go. I know you shouldn't paint a model's face first. But we could paint that, then we could assemble this straight after. 
so that for the rest of the tutorial that's going to be one sub assembly so you'd have one sub assembly that would be part of that then you'd have the torso and the left arm and shoulder pad and his backpack and that's all we'd have then um so i think that's what we're going to do so what i think we'll do is we'll glue this piece to the, to a base just very lightly so he can remove it later on because I want to build a nice little um, display plinth for him. So we'll just tack him with some super glue to this base. Like that. So that'll be one sub assembly. And for this one, just so we can undercoat him, I'm going to tack him with dark glue to the base like that. But that will be removed then shortly after once we finish the head. And we will attach these two pieces together like we just talked about. So it's that, those two pieces. Now these, and I'm going to need to be able to hold these while I'm painting them. And in the Ragnar tutorial, uh, in the Ragnar paint along, I went with the flying stand technique uh, to hold the miniatures. And I found that a little bit frustrating. A lot of the uh, time I, I managed to snap the pieces off. So I'm going to go back to the way I've always done it for this uh, masterclass. And that is pinning. So we just use paper clips and pin vise. Regular super glue. Any type will do. Now what we do is we look for a convenient place where we could sort of drill a little hole. That isn't going to be shown when the miniature is finished. So I'd say here doesn't need to be very deep don't want to go all the way through and be careful when you're doing this that you don't jab yourself with the uh, the drill bit because uh, i can vouch that that hurts a lot when you shove one of these through your fingertip so just drilled a little hole in the bottom there then we take some super glue only a little bit take a paper clip we bend this out. We just dip the end in the glue like that. And push it into place like that. It takes a little while for it to go off. So what I'll do is in the meantime, I'll just leave that dry like that with it in place. Um, same for this piece now. I'm going to drill a hole down the centre of that peg. It's quite simple to do. Just because it gives you the most material to work with. You can perhaps go a little bit deeper than you need to. So I haven't damaged the peg, so the peg will still fit into that hole when the time comes. And we'll take a paper clip. Some glue on the end of it, like that, and then we'll push that in and leave that dry as well. And then, same for this one, what we need to do is find somewhere I think in the base here upwards would give us the most material so. Be careful with this again because I don't know if you noticed the Games Workshop seem to have perfected the art of hollow casting. Quite a few pieces I've noticed I've, I've tried drilling over the last few years and um, they're hollow. I can only assume it's to save material, but it's quite clever as well, I suppose. And uh, but quite easy to punch all the way through it and then right into the end of your finger. So I'll just drill a hole there. That's not going to be seen later on. We'll take paper clip again. These paper clips won't be wasted. You just cut them down to what you need and then put them back into the um, into the pot. And so the same thing again. Coat the end of the paper clip in the glue, like that. And then we're just going to push that in, and leave that dry. won't take a huge amount of time. In the meantime then we'll glue the main body to the base 
what I'll do is I'll use um, a bit of paper clip. Like I said, I just want to tack it in place really, so I don't want to make a good bond because it'll be quite hard to remove later on. So we just put a little dot like that. Place them down like that. Let's let that dry. And then the same thing, just for the purpose of undercoating him, his foot here with some super glue. And we'll just push that down. Our plastic glue so you won't get a strong bond straight away. You're going to have to hold it there for a little while. Probably better to put him down and uh, prop him up against something. So that's that piece. This piece will go into his kneecap. So for this piece, just going to add some this is plastic glue. So this will be permanent. Not too much. Just going to push that in there like that. So that's that piece done. Now this is this is nice and secure. What I need to do now is straighten out the rest of the paper clip. And I take a pair of pliers and I'll just bend this paper clip down. Let me straighten this bit out. Now we don't need all of this, so what I do is I take that much, probably don't even need that much. This piece can go back in the pot for another time. And then what I do, I take one of my old pin vices, which you can see I've used for undercoating a few times, and slide that in, tightening up as if it was a, a drill bit. Now this gives a nice strong handle. This is what I've used for years and years and uh, it's a pretty good uh, method. So if you want to copy this, um, you know, go ahead. But uh, if you've got your own tried and tested ways of holding your miniatures, or you can even assemble the whole thing and paint it all in one go, it's completely up to you. Uh, you don't have to follow these sub-assemblies at all. If it's easier just to paint the whole model in one go for you, then do that. So that's that one. Then we will do the same thing for this. Now this one, because he's it's coming straight down, just need to put a kink in it of about here. The great thing about paper clips is that you can do this with it. I know they work hard and then they'll finally snap, but you've got a little way to go before that happens. And you can sort of, even halfway through painting, if you want to get to a bit and it's not in the right orientation, you just bend it and then bend it back. So I sort of take this much again, watching your fingers. Again, this piece can go back in the uh, pot. Just straighten the bottom of this out a bit. That. And same thing again, place that into the center of the pin vise like it was a drill bit.
I just want to bring tilt this forward a little bit. So to try and match the orientation of it as it's going to be when it's fully assembled. Um, so that's that one. So the final piece now is uh, just this shoulder pad. Because these are patron only videos, I want to show you as, of, as much of the process as possible. If this is sort of teaching you to suck eggs, then uh, let me know. And I, I won't go into this much detail about sub assemblies again, but I thought it might be useful for some of you, especially if you're new to the hobby and new to painting and stuff like that. I certainly didn't invent this method. Uh, I think I picked it up from Mike McVeigh's books along the way somewhere. I don't know. Okay, so that's that one. And the same thing, running out of handles. If you guys want to pick up some of these handles for yourselves, um, I've put a link in the description below, along with links to some of the other tools and materials I use. So go check them out. I've got to tell you that they are affiliate links. So if you do click on them and make a purchase, I may receive a small commission. Uh, at no extra cost to you though. I just got to tell you that. So what I do then is I can even use these to actually hold while I'm while I'm spraying. Um, which is quite handy because this is the this is the useful thing about a pin vice as a handle is that you can hold you hold the base in your palm between your fingers like that and as you're painting you can without moving at all you can just twist your fingers gently and the part of the model comes to the brush really handy really useful really I really really like it I'm sure it's not for everybody though But for now, we're done, I think. Um, I'll just clean my desk. Okay, so we've got the torso, the backpack, your shoulder pad, these two parts here, which will soon become one part after we've painted the face like that. Okay, so next, I need to go and undercoat all of these. If you go do the same, undercoat it black and then we'll uh, come back and start talking about color schemes okay so um all the parts are undercoated nicely now like that and the final piece okay so what we need to do now is we just need to remove the um remove the masking tape that we put on or that i put on you didn't have to do it if you don't want to uh, that was covering up the little peg holes. There's nothing on that one. This is just me being a little bit overcautious so I don't get any problems when we come to uh, put it all together at the end. So to get rid of the um, masking fluid, you just scrape it off. It'll come off like... Um, like latex. Like that, so it just peels off. And you've got a nice bare peg, which shouldn't have any problems putting together later on. I say shouldn't because uh, you can never tell. Okay, that's one. Getting it started is a little bit tricky, but... There you go. Okay, there's the pegs on that one. And finally, uh, the peg off of the backpack. If you want, you can just scrape the, um, the undercoat off if you don't want to get the masking fluid. That's just as good. Okay. 
My fingers are too big to get up the ear. It's been a little bit more fiddly than it normally is, so sod low. Okay, so that's the uh, the other peg. One uh, I forgot to cover up. So uh, what I'll show you is how you would scrape it off if it was um, if you haven't uh, used the masking fluid method. And as you can see, it's still pretty simple. Use the side of the blade, work your way around very lightly. Just taking off that thin layer of undercoat. Now, the reason why you do this is because we're going to be using plastic glue to bond it all together at the end. And you don't want the undercoat interfering with the melting of the plastic to bond the two pieces together. You just work your way all the way around the peg to the end as well. Okay, and that's one uh, cleaned up peg, the alternative method. Okay, so there's uh, one final thing that we need to do before we actually get on with the uh, painting. And that is to have a think about the actual colour scheme of the miniature. Right, so for obvious reasons, this miniature is uh, being painted a lot right now. It's actually filling up my in Instagram feed. I don't know about you, uh, but there's lots of people painting him. He's certainly one of the most popular from the Indomitus box set. So I want to try and make our version uh, stand out. Now, I've decided to uh, paint him as a Dark Angels Primaris Chaplain. I haven't seen too many of those at the moment, so uh, that will help, I think. As he's a chaplain, we're sort of stuck with the black armour if we want to stay true to the fluff and the background of uh, Space Marines and not experience the uh, internet rage that I had off some people when I painted Ragnar's hair blonde a few weeks back. But there are a few things that we can do to play around with that and uh, make it a little bit more interesting. So I think we'll highlight it with some neutral greys and then I was thinking that we change the hue of the finished armor very, very subtly by applying some very thin green glazes. It'll play into that he's a dark angel as well, and it'll give it a very subtle, cool tone. So, neutral gray with green glazes. It will be very, very subtle indeed, because you don't want him to end up looking like he's going down the Dark Eldar route or the Necrons. You still want him to look like a Space Marine, but just, just a hint there. So it is there, um, and if you're looking at it up close, you'll, or your eyes should pick it up. Um, now the next largest area is probably the metals. Now for this, I want to go with a, a nice warm bronze colour. Uh, I've seen lots of versions of the Mini at the moment with bright gold Crozius Arcanums and the Reliquaries, which is cool, looks really good. Uh, but I want to be able to introduce some cool tones uh, in the form of some green verdigris into the, into the metal areas to help tie them together with the black green armour. Um, and, and you won't be able to do that with gold, because obviously there's no, go there's no verdigris on gold. This would be bronze. Bronze, bronze trim to his uh, shoulder pad. The chest eagle will be um, bronze. Details on his knees, that will, they'll also be bronze. And the trim, bronze. Okay, so obviously now he's a he's obviously a dark angel, so 
shoulder pad you can't quite see will be the standard Dark Angels green. With a white or light cream Dark Angel symbol. Uh, same thing for his knee pad. It's ultramarine in the photo, but that would be Dark Angel pad. So you've got green here, green here. Now the gun casing, it would be nice to introduce a spot color to the miniature. So I was sort of thinking a nice deep red, which is I think is traditional for Dark Angels anyway. Dark Angels, dark, uh, deep red, uh, which will complement the green nicely. Then sort of thinking about composition of the miniature, um, so you've got red here. Uh, so I thought the Crozius Arcanum handle will be red as well. Maybe not the same red as the gun casing, so that you could they look like two different materials because this will be like a, a leather, I imagine. Um, so maybe a pale red. He's got a book hidden down on his side down here as well. So we'll um, see, we could do the same for that as well. So the book, be pale red as well. Move that into shot a bit. Now for the robes, uh, I've seen quite a lot of red robes at the moment. I know the original every metal version is uh, is like a yellowy cream, but I thought to contrast with the black armor, I thought we could do a nice pale cream. And then we could shade that with some warm tones. So it contrasts with the cool armor. And I may do some weathering at the bottom at the end to tie it in with whatever base we choose for it. Now, we're painting this as a display figure, so we could just paint it all cream and leave it. But what I thought would be a nice little touch and to help show that he is a dark angel um because he's only really got his shoulder pad and a little knee pad down there if we could sort of paint this area which is i think looking at the folds is sort of the back it's folding round on itself and the same this side as well um we could do a dark green back to the cloth so the front of his tabard or uh, robe this bit here and this main area here will be the cream and then we could do a nice dark green uh, back to it obviously all of the back if you look at him from the rear uh, would be in a nice little dark angels green um, and then we could try and do some freehand uh, around here which would be a nice little touch and help take the miniature to the next level so something suitably dark angel I'd just off the top of my head, maybe just some little diagonal piece there as well, um, like that, in um, a nice cream patterning against the dark green. I think that would look quite nice. Obviously, that's the that's not all of it, uh, or. Maybe something like that. What type of thing? Who knows? We'll we'll think about that later on. It should be a nice little detail that will help reinforce that he's from the Dark Angel chapter. And also the fiddly little free hand will help take the painting up, and up to the next sort of level. Now, purity seals. There are quite a few. There's a lot on his backpack. Um, one on his gun. One on his side there coming down. Uh, so I wanted to do them in a in a similar pale cream to the uh, robes, together with some nice red purity seals. Although you got red here and red here, so maybe we'll go with more purpley colour for the wax itself. But we can figure that out as we go. He's got a leather belt around his waist, um, so we can go for nice dark neutral colour with that, nice dark brown. 
neutral. Doesn't interfere with the color scheme then. The head itself. So obviously we want that to be the main focus of the miniature. So you've got so many, so many cool tones going on around him. I think we should do that in a nice warm, pale skin tone. And then maybe the metallic side of his bionic face, like a cool steel. Maybe blues in it. Then so you got red here, red here. I'd like to pick his eye out in his bionic eye red uh, with some OSL. Be a nice little touch. That will give us uh, the spot color red nicely distributed around the miniature, which is sort of important for the overall composition. For the skull, I was thinking maybe keeping it like the heavy metal team have done it in uh, like a bone color rather than painting it metal. Uh, although, sort of, we don't want it sort of distracting from from his face, so we'll uh, sort that out later. Little details like the pipes. Uh, we'll do in the traditional hazard stripe like the heavy metal team have done there. Maybe red and black instead of yellow and black. It's not, not as traditional, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, some of the other details, we'll try and put some little glowing buttons on some of these details on the gun. Maybe just little tweaks here and there that will uh, help embellish the miniature a bit. But we can sort that as we go. Okay, so I think that's um, enough for us to be getting on with. So in part two, I think it's best that we start with that head uh, so we can finish assembling the, uh, that main sub-assembly. We'll need to go back and probably tweak the skin tones uh, at the very end once the rest of the miniature's finished. Um, you shouldn't really start by painting the skin tones because you've got nothing to compare it with against that black background, the black undercoat. Um, so it's not a good idea to start, but the way I've... Uh, assembled it now is probably the best thing to do and then just an extra step at the end but that's not a big problem okay so that's it for this video um, i hope you enjoyed watching it if you're going to be joining in painting along make sure you get the miniature all uh, prepped and undercoated for, ready for the next video and i'll see you in the next video real soon and remember if you guys enjoyed watching this video hit that thumbs up button make sure you subscribe to my channel and if you've got any questions leave them in the comments section below and I'll see you guys back here real soon.